So Audrey, good to see you. How's your day yes. going? My day is going really well, Milian. Good to see you too. I was saying at the very beginning, it's a gorgeous day here in Portland with so many blossoms, uh, cherry blossoms, daffodils, flowers everywhere. It's lovely. Today, we I've invited Audrey back and we I'm hoping to talk to Audrey um, about student success. So when I when I think about student su success, that means a lot to me because we talk a lot about that, you know, as, as administrators at Reed in particular. But um, if we're talking to families and student success might it, it can mean a, mean a lot. Can you talk about um, what student success looks like at Reed? And when I when I use that term, what exactly are we talking about? Like so many aspects of uh, the educational model, it's very individual and. I don't think there's one size fits all for students at Reed, um, just as there's not sort of one set fixed curriculum that students go through, whereby every student graduates with the same set of courses. Mm -hmm. Instead, students take an array of courses. Um, they, they graduate each and every one of them with a very unique experience. And so, you know, success is multidimensional. That's something I would want to stress. And when I think about Reed graduates, I always think of their multidimensionality. It's a model that prepares students for lifelong learning. And the success is that students feel a perpetual sense of curiosity. Audrey, why don't we start start by talking about, um, you know, I think about different features of student success. Um, one of these is uh, really based on something our um, um, the Center for Learning Beyond Reed talks about, um, Reed's educational model, a, a neighborhood model, um, and setting students up for success. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yep, and I um, I love that you said Center for Learning Beyond Reed. It's Center for Life Beyond Reed. Life. <laughs> <laughs> right. life, life and learning are, Thank you. Thank are synonymous, you. and I, I, I like that we do think about you know, life beyond read and how to help students um, imagine their, their futures. Uh, so a, a lot of what the, the Center for Life Beyond Read does, uh, as early as when students first arrive, is help students think about what they might be able to do in terms of finding internships, getting grants, um, having different experiences throughout their time here that will allow them to have a kind of meta narrative. That is, what, is, what does all this mean? I'm taking, I'm taking X number of classes every semester and how do they come together and what will it mean for me as I, as I go forward with my life? Uh, something that I love about the way the Center for Life Beyond Read works with students is that they help students translate what it means to, for instance, write a senior thesis with which all of our, our students mm -hmm. work um, into something that they might talk about in a job interview or even as they're, you know, if they're applying for a graduate program. But um, I think all of us understand how difficult it can be to really appreciate our own experience and put it into words. And so working with students to help them see that, that, that writing and speaking um, that they do in the conference for a humanities course is going to be really helpful to them in you know leadership roles in the future. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I, I think you are you the way in which you're uniquely positioned you're you're you were you you taught you're a professor for many years, and now you essentially oversee an institution that really focuses on um, uh, learning. Um, can you talk about um, the way that uh, faculty serve as mentors through this process that, that uh, while challenging, they have some support? Sure. Well, something that I've always appreciated about you know, coming from the classroom, being at, at small residential colleges is that we set high standards. We expect our students to do good work, and then we work with them to help them um, figure out how to rise to those challenges. There's also a real sense at Reed, more than any other place that I've been, of the exploration of the classroom and students and faculty as co-explorers in figuring things out together. And in, in my view, that's another one of the individualized features of this model that encourages students to look within, figure out what they, you know, process information, ask questions, and then um, be part of a shared process in which, which um, knowledge and learning takes place 
uh, in, in a group setting. So it's a it's very, uh, um, you know, sometimes we call this model hands on or high touch. And what that means is that there's, you know, every student will have have different experiences, you know, and that kind of individual attention, it goes beyond what I think is, is magic as well, which is we know our students' names, we uh, recognize them, we identify them as, as people, and then we work to help them have the best possible learning experience. What is in the secret sauce at Reed? What, what is it that we're doing that's distinctive or particularly special? Well, I, I say about Reed students that they, students, they, they're students who commit, they are uh, passionately engaged, they care deeply, about learning, about ideas, about one another. And that, that sort of um, the kind of uh, attention that Reed students bring to their, their learning experience is something that I think is, is heightened here. It's, it's stronger. And you know, when we talk about Reed, uh, we do sometimes talk about rigor. The academic program is rigorous, which means, again, we, have, we set high standards. And what I've come to see is that the, the passion that students bring to this, the passion that the faculty bring. It's a rigor that's really based on love, love mm -hmm. of learning, love of ideas, love of art, love of creativity. And um, everybody knows what it means to get really absorbed in something because you're really excited. Mm -hmm. And um, I see that excitement all around me at Reed. A lot of families are, are curious. Um, they've heard a little bit about our response to COVID and maybe you could say a bit about that. But is there anything in place that we will carry forward uh, in years to come that we've learned about ourselves in this past year? We have certainly learned that we're capable of stepping up and doing things that we could never have imagined before. Um, really uh, figuring out ways to have uh, classes be in person this year, that, that was a, um, something that, that um, required a lot of trust um, as we were planning for the fall semester last summer, one of the constant themes from um, many people was, well, will our students adhere to safety protocols? You know, the, around the country, you hear st stories of, of you, know, you know, misbehavior that leads to outbreaks. And, you know, I and, and others felt really confident that the care that our students show for one another, the care they have for our faculty and staff would would um, win the day. And indeed, um, it, at this point, I believe we can say it has. And we have really been successful in having um, the, you know, many of our students, most of our students here on campus in the area. And so that's, that's been a really, um, it's, been, it's been revelatory. So learning about that, that it, in, indeed our care for one another is, is real, it's alive. Um, I know that we will cherish all the more the in in personness, the unmaskedness as we as we go forward. Um, I do know that that we will also be thinking about ways in which the these kinds of virtual formats could make uh, certain kinds of interactions easier. One of our chemistry professors, for example, um, has talked about how um, she's able, if a student writes to say they're, they're struggling with an assignment, she's able to jump on a Zoom call like that, instant office hours. And I, I would say that the, this is something that I, I think other faculty will be thinking about as well, is you know, ways that there can be you know, additional connections that might come through some of the virtual formats that, that we have come, become accustomed to. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've I've thought a lot about, and I, I've, we, we've talked about this in different circles, Audrey, is, um, you know, in, in, um, in the last year in particular, there's been so many fights for, for the heart of the nation, you know, particularly around issues of diversity and inclusion, whether it's ethnic diversity, gender minorities, socioeconomic diversities. Can you talk a bit about um, the way in which you perceive us supporting communities of diverse population and um, what, what REACH role is in all of this? Well, first of all, I will, will note that we, we do have an anti-racism statement in addition to a diversity statement. And when I was looking at Reed myself two years ago um, and imagining myself as, as Reed's president, um, these things were important to me that the college has made a commitment to, to do this work. And when I say work, um, I wanna note that it's a work in progress 
you know, we come in to this history with uh, the legacies of the past um, uh, as, as inheritance, and we will need to continually grapple with, dismantle, question what we do. So in terms of support or, it, or community that we, that we gather here at Reed, um, I would say that we're you know, deeply committed to paying attention and to being equity-minded and attentive to the ways in which we come from, we come from different places, backgrounds, um, um, representations, and uh, the way that we show respect to one another is also part of the lifelong learning um, that we, you know, for everyone's journey. Audrey, a um, few folks are curious about engagement with alumni, how we engage them. I know that you've talked with a lot of our alumni about, you know, their experiences. Can you talk a bit about alumni engagement, what you hear from the folks who graduated from Reed? Yeah, well, actually, one of the questions that I will always ask, whether it's a new Reedy or someone who graduated 30 years ago, is tell me your Reed story. How did you learn about Reed? Um, what did you discover here? And something that I, you know, I mentioned earlier, the multidimensionality of our, our students and alumni, and a common theme, if there were a common theme in the stories I get from alum, alumni, is, well, my stories not really usual. People mm -hmm. almost always begin that way. And you know, one alum recently was telling me the story of various um, you know, different shifts in their career, ultimately ending up a uh, you know, su successful um, 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 person working in the medical field, uh, but took, took a circuitous route to get there and was just saying, I did I did this thing, I did that thing, I did, and the stories are, are fascinating. Now there are, are some people who, who also go straight to the, the place that they wanna go and they'll say too, well, I'm doing this thing, but um, I, I feel like that's an unusual role. Uh, so um, anyway, I wanted to highlight that there's just this sense from our alum, alum community that their experience at Reed has prepared them for anything and everything, and there's a high degree of curiosity. This uh, father asked, um, uh, they visited Reed in March, they're very excited, but they'd like us to elaborate on the overall ethos of student success at Reed, which I think is a, a nice question. Some of the areas that specifically we think about for student success um, is the academic program. Um, you know, our conference-based classes, how students and faculty interact uh, to make sure that our advising is robust and strong. Um, a second piece of student success is our community. Um, how do we help our students make uh, meaningful connections with other students, with their faculty? Uh, one thing that I think is really overlooked is that students have meaningful connections with our staff. So were we in an atmosphere where you could actually visit campus during an open house um, our, our staff come and join you for lunch. And that might be someone from the registrar's office or someone from uh, our student work office, but these are people that become important pieces of your college experience that we don't often consider. So um, creating space and traditions for, for community to happen. Um, health and well-being. Uh, we've talked about counseling, um, but it's also, are we being physically fit? Are we getting outside and getting exercise? Um, we're, we're not, we don't, we don't just study 24-7. So what else are we doing to help students find balance and speak to the other parts of them? And um, finally, and I'm sure that there, there are more subcategories, but life um, beyond read. Um, our goal with college, our expectation is that we come here, we thrive, we succeed, and we go out and we take this knowledge and we apply it in different places. Um, are we helping folks prepare for this uh, in a way that's productive to lead happy and prosperous lives? Yeah, and Millian, I would just add that the you know, the, a liberal arts education is a build your own adventure in the sense that we, you know, our, our students will begin um, by having a pretty broad base. Uh, and, you know, for instance, they all will participate in our humanities core. Um, and then as they proceed, um, students become interested in you know, a major field and you go from um, breadth to depth. And, um, and then in the concluding year, students are working on individual projects with faculty members, whether that be research in a lab or a creative project or um, uh, you know, so something that will take them out to 
um, explore something in the social sciences. There's so the the um, the kind of following the path. I often imagine students going toward the light. You know, what is it that interests me? This there's this, and they they put them together in configurations that are that are truly unique. And so when a student uh, you know, graduates and completes their program, um, they, they also, also have a bag of, of things that they can take with them and draw on in life. Grading at Reed, um, you know, what's, what's the deal with that? Some folks are wondering, you know, how does students not being able to access their grades? How is that helpful? Um, and when you're done with this, I'm gonna have, um, Grace chat out an article that we're all familiar with, but can you talk a little bit about why we have this particular approach to grading at Reed? Well, thank you. So first I'll say that there was a, a, a couple of months ago, an opinion writer lumped Reed in with a set of schools that this writer wanted to disparage and said that we're a school that doesn't even bother giving students grades. Uh, didn't say that what we, what we do, we, there are actually grades, students get grades. Um, what they get from their professors is feedback um, tailored to the individual student, comments on papers, comments on assignments, uh, so detailed notes on their, their work and their progress. If students would like to see the grade, they can ask to see it. So the grades exist, um, but the, the focal point isn't the grade. The focal point is the learning. You know, as, as important as uh, people might think that grades are as the measure of all things. And at this stage, I know these are things that, that you, you have to be thinking about. Um, you, your learning is, is the focus here. And that's, that's why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. So what is the plan for fall, Audrey? So the plan for fall is uh, to, be, to be in person and to come together. And uh, we have every reason to believe that things will be safe and we will you know, follow and monitor all news and take any steps that we need to ensure that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel quite optimistic though, as, as we um, see the greater av availability of vaccines um, that we, we will be able to come back together. Audrey, so we've got here an international student population. We've got programs for students studying abroad. Can you talk about how um, having a community where every state is represented, um, dozens and dozens of countries are, res are represented and students can study away, how well, that really supports both the conversation in the classroom and um, uh, the academic and social program here at Reed? Well, I will say that, that in, you know, by many, many measures, we are a diverse community. And you know, so many of us don't have opportunities to live and work and socialize and study um, in, um, with, with people who are coming from other countries and other experiences. And it is certainly one of the things that enhances the, uh, the, the program that we have at Reed and the you know, benefits everybody. So um, I often think about a, an experience that I had teaching a class and I was teaching a comedy class and the, this class just ended up being, it was a first year writing seminar, ended up um, being over half international students and mm -hmm. half, um, you know, under half um, domestic students. And to teach comedy, uh, you know, to, to recognize that, that, you know, comedy is one of those, the last things that you learn when you, when you arrive in an, another country. We, um, we all recognize, oh, this simple joke, it was a joke um, that Jerry Seinfeld a uh, comedian um, here in this country uh, was he was he was uh, it was a, a short video on how to tell a joke and the joke was focused on a pop tart and we just had to stop and talk about what a pop tart is and you know in the end you know every experience that we had everything that we read we everyone doesn't know what a pop tart is we uh, we were taking <laughs> a little pastry that you put in the toaster sugar 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 so much yeah. sugar. Uh, a good thing to make fun of if you're if you're a comedian. But what ended up happening was that, that, that in this class where there were students coming from multiple countries, um, we were we we grappled with the material in ways that were more rich and complex than we would have, um, and we learned some fundamental things about how humor works together. Mm -hmm. And so I think you know that that example um, from from my experience of what it means to study in a, a community where 
people are coming from everywhere. It, it, it makes a big difference. Can you talk a little bit about the balanced curriculum, um, a little bit about some of the things that you think make our um, program singularly unique in terms of their strength? Yeah, well, it is um, something that it has a certain flavor to have such to have strengths across across all the disciplines. And mm -hmm. so we have world class faculty, uh, artists, researchers, and you know, I just there's a, a high caliber work, whether it's the, you know, when I go to see science poster fairs and hear students talk about the adventure that they went through to come up with the project and what they discovered and learned, or it's a, um, a theater production where I'm just, you know, amazed by how uh, gifted and talented our students are, you know, and on any given day, you can be in multiple settings with people who are kind of pushing you to think and experience the world around you um, differently. And so I would say that that having having that contained within the small campus also means that it's all within reach. And so that that's certainly one of the, the real benefits. Um, when we're in full swing and in person on um, any given night, there's an event or speaker or some um, activity to go to that will um, you know, really help expand one's sense of what's, what's possible. Uh, what would we like our students to gain from an education at Reed? Well, when I say that I, I want students to have um, rewarding lives, um, that, that is uppermost. I want them to be able to leave Reed and feel satisfied with what they've accomplished here and be, you know, feel prepared for what will come next in, in their lives and world. And we know that, you know, what we've discovered this year, uh, the unexpectedness of this pandemic, that our students are likely to face challenges up ahead. And I think that the flexibility and adaptive, um, adaptability that, that we foster um, through the model of, of the liberal arts education serves students well. And so it's gonna, it's gonna sound trite. I want them to be happy and I want them to be happy with themselves and what they've accomplished. Well said.